Hi everyone! I thought I would share some of my favorites with you today. I haven't done a favorites video in a while and I thought it would be fun to just sit down and chat with you about some of the things that I've been loving. To be honest, I didn't feel comfortable talking about my favorite things when we were so deep in self-isolation and quarantine, but I get it now. This is the new normal and so here I am. Before I jump into my favorites, I just wanted to say thank you to um, all of you who watched my last vlog and left me really encouraging, supportive comments. I really appreciated that and um, I really appreciate that none of you make me feel like I owe you full-on explanations about my life or what I'm dealing with and that you do allow me to have a private life and that I can keep some things private. I'm really grateful that you all don't pressure me into sharing things that I'm not fully comfortable with and that you understand I'm learning and growing too and that's something that I really value in all of you so thank you um, I'm feeling a lot better um, now that I'm back in my own space let's move on to my favorites um, let's start with fashion because I haven't talked about fashion or style in a while I did not intend for that to rhyme sometimes I feel like I don't even know what my sense of style is anymore because I just dress for comfort when I'm at home and when I'm running errands but I've been trying to put a little bit more effort into my outfit and it actually makes it kind of fun because I can reinvent or rediscover um, my style so what I've been really into lately is slip dresses paired with a white button-up so I have two slip dresses that I've been loving this first one is this red silk slip dress from Grana and I got this a while ago it is really comfy very light it's like perfect for summer and I love that it's so bold and red this next one is a dress that I got from forever 21 a really long time ago I got it for like the holiday season and it has this really deep v-neck with this little knot in the center I'm sorry since it's from forever 21 you probably won't even find it anymore I'm gonna describe it anyway you know why I love it and maybe you can find something similar elsewhere if I find something similar I will link it down below it's just a really nice peachy color oh my god I'm just realizing now how well it kind of matches with my hair and then the back has a little slit and I love pairing these with a white button-up because you can wear something light, kind of fancy, um, but the white button-up really makes it a bit more casual and dresses it down a little bit. And it's just really nice because you still feel really light, airy. You usually like to pair those with like Converse or Nikes, like sneakers, just to like dress it down a bit more too. Next, um, I just got this pink tie-dye sweatshirt from a mutual friend. She started her own tie-dye bleach brand and sent this over to me and I've been loving wearing this. It's just super comfy. It's really soft on the inside and I love the way that she tie-dyed and bleached it and it's just perfect. I know tie-dye has been like a huge trend for people in quarantine but it's not really something I want to do. It's a little oversized on me which I don't mind. I'm kind of just used to that but yeah I love it. I've been wearing this a lot and I actually can't wait till it gets a little bit colder so I can wear this more often. Next in fashion, I have these nude slash tan filas and I know I'm pretty late to this trend. It usually takes me a while before I hop on and invest in a trend. <laughs> This trend is probably out. I don't know, but I don't really care. I love how chunky they are. I also love that they're not white. I have a bunch of white sneakers already, and when I saw these, I just had to grab them. This colorway is so me, so I'm glad I waited to pick up a pair of Fila's. And I wear this all the time now. Um, they're just really easy to slip on and off, and they're really comfy, and when I walk around in them, I just feel like really powerful. Like I was stomping around because look at how big these are. I love it. Okay, let's move on to makeup. First, I have this from Laneige. This is their glowy makeup serum and if you've seen my recent makeup tutorials you probably already know this is a favorite of mine. This just launched earlier this year and they actually had a zoom launch for it which was really interesting and I have just been loving this. This is a primer slash serum in one and it has this really amazing like gel like texture. You can wear it under makeup. You can just wear this to give your skin a really nice glow. It's really hydrating. It's great for all skin types. Next, I want to talk about a brow product. This is from M Cosmetics. It is their brow cream and I use the shade Espresso. So after I do my brows, I will brush this through my brow hairs in the direction that they grow in and it just 
really gives your brows that natural fluffy look and it really holds my brow hairs in place all day with most other brow products that i've tried they tend to kind of lose its oomph throughout the day but this one is so good and i love that the applicator is super thin super small so you can really get in there and it really helps you avoid putting on too much product i find that when the applicator is too large it's just too much i don't have as much control so i think this product is really amazing especially if you have stiff or coarse brow hairs like me next i have this lash food conditioning collagen lash primer so after i curl my lashes i apply this on my lashes and it goes on white and it has microfibers that actually lengthen your lashes and add some thickness to it and once that dries i apply a layer of black mascara and it really does add length and volume to your lashes it's really amazing and this is one of the better uh, lash primers that I've used because I love the applicator on this one as well it's like a rubbery spoolie rather than the the fluffier ones because I have so few lashes um, the fluffier applicators are a little bit too heavy for my lashes they're a little too thick and it gets kind of clumpy but with this one it's just really easy to apply and um, really easy to comb through your lashes. The next thing I have to share um, is actually a lash glue. You might know that I have loved the House of Lashes lash glue for a long time. It's been one of my all-time favorites because it really holds my falsies in place throughout the day. I don't have to worry about them falling off or the corners folding out or whatever. I love the brush adhesive and I never thought I would find a lash glue that I would love more than this one, but I found it. And it is the Petite Cosmetics Lash Glue. This one is pretty much the same in design. It is a brush tip applicator. The tubes almost look completely identical. I mean, I think maybe a lot of lash glues probably have this design now. The reason that this has now become my new favorite is because with the House of Lashes Lash Glue, sometimes I have to wait until it's a little bit tackier or has time to oxidize before I can really use it. When I first open it, it's a little bit too liquidy, so it's a little bit trickier to work with. But with the Petite Cosmetics Lash Glue, I opened it, I tried it, and I don't have to wait for it to oxidize or get tacky or whatever. It just works really well. Like, you know when you apply falsies, um, sometimes the lash glue is too watery that it makes your lashes slip a little bit but with this it just works really well i don't have to worry about the lash like slipping or anything like that during the application process so both of these lash glues are great in terms of keeping your lashes on throughout the day but in terms of application and putting on your lashes i say the petite cosmetics lash glue is a little bit better with that it's just a little bit easier to work with next i want to talk about the misha glitter prism liquid shadows this one is my favorite it's in the shade fairy beads i worked with them in my last makeup tutorial but i wanted to include it in this favorites video because the glitters in this are amazing they just add such an amazing shine and glitter to your eyes it's like the perfect amount and this is how i knew this was a favorite one day when i was back at my parents house i went to the shower or the bathroom or something and i had totally forgot that i used this during the day and i looked in the mirror and there was just all these like glitter speckles like shining back at me and i was so taken aback i was like whoa that looks really pretty and so this is why i had to put it in this favorites video um the gold one is especially my favorite just because i love gold um i think it's really pretty and it's just oh, it's just so good i like to apply a little bit on the back of my hand and then take my fingers to apply it on my eyes i find that's like the most easiest application and has the most control and because it's more of that liquid texture not just like loose glitters i find that you don't really get fallout with this and it stays on throughout the day so if you're looking for that subtle but effective glitter that shine i highly recommend this it also reminds me of um, korean makeup looks or k-pop looks that have that glitter that subtle glitter but it's super pretty if you want that look this is great for that next i want to talk about this face wash since we're in the makeup slash skincare section um this face wash is from holy frog this is their superior omega nutritive gel wash and it's the second 
bottle that I finished from Holy Frog. I really love their face washes. Their face washes are really gentle. They feel amazing on the skin. My skin doesn't feel dry or tight after I use them. It just feels really comfortable. I know there are a lot of really great face washes out there. For me, it's a little bit hard sometimes to tell the difference, but the fact that I've used up two face washes from them is pretty amazing in my opinion. The first one I used from them was the pink one. I think I've talked about it in a favorites video before. It was their milky wash. That one was also really nice. They also have an acne wash, which I gave to a friend to try and she said her skin cleared up um, after using that. Of course, there are other factors, but if you are looking for some type of acne wash, I would highly consider Holy Frog. Just you know, do your research and look into it, but I, you know, I love this personal experience. I love this. <laughs> Next, I want to talk about a new hair care product that I've integrated into my routine. So this is from Nature Lab. This is their Perfect Shine Oil Mist color and heat protectant. So technically you're supposed to apply this when your hair is dry. I like using this when I get out of the shower and before I blow dry. And to be honest, it's low key kind of embarrassing how many leave-in products I use after I get out of the shower and washing my hair um, because you know, my hair is been bleached and color treated. I really need to put that moisture back in. I think I use about four or five other leave-in products. I'll put in clips of the other products that I use. I've talked about most of these in other videos before, so I won't get into details. You know, at first I thought that maybe my routine was a little bit excessive, but when I went back to my parents' house, I forgot to bring all of my leave-in products and my hair felt so dry <laughs> and so unmanageable. So. I felt very validated in using all of these products to maintain the health. Not even maintain, but just bring back life and vitality to my hair. Um, but anyway, back to this. I really love this product because I do love oils. I love how it makes my hair shine, but I really don't like putting oils on my hands. It just feels really oily and it just, I don't like that. Um, I still use those, but I really love this because it's an oil mist and the mist is really, it's really nice. It's really fine. It's not like super squirty or anything like that. It's perfect. And I also really love this because it smells amazing. It's got this like fruity, posh smell. I'm really bad at describing scents. Posh does not even have a smell to it, but I guess it just smells kind of like fruity, but also luxurious at the same time. Next, let's go into media favorites, um, TV, movies, music. It, it was real, actually really hard to remember what I liked from the last four to five months. So I'm just gonna share some things that are top of mind. So let me talk about some light favorites. I'm not gonna go into the summary or describing what these shows are, but if you've heard of these shows and you were wondering if you should watch it, this is a sign that maybe you should really consider watching it. So one, um, Outer Banks on Netflix, I actually surprisingly really liked. It got really good. Pose is also really amazing. Um, it is a show that aired on FX, I think, but now it's also on Netflix. I think Pose is an amazing show. It tells really beautiful, amazing stories of transgender women and the ballroom scene and the friendships and relationships and camaraderie that comes from houses and these competitions. I think it helped me to understand a little bit more and also helps me to be a better ally when it comes to um, issues surrounding the LGBTQ plus community. I still have a long way to go for sure, obviously, considering how hard it is for me to speak about. You know, I just want to make sure that I'm being respectful in my allyship and in solidarity. So next I have two shows that I really, really loved. The first one is Avatar The Last Airbender, a classic, a gem, gold, so good. If you haven't heard of Avatar The Last Airbender, where have you been? This was a cartoon series that aired on Nickelodeon when I was a kid and it was just made available on Netflix a few months ago and it is just truly amazing. Just a feel good series. I think for me, like it is just a really healing show. I think I needed to see that corruption and evil could be defeated by good. 
The next show I want to talk about is The 100. I've talked about this show before on another favorites video. I think I first watched it last year. There are six seasons to it. I binged the whole thing again. The newest season is out. I haven't had a chance to watch that yet. If you haven't seen The 100, it is really good, but also maybe really sensitive during this time right now. Pretty much in a far distant future, planet Earth is destroyed in a nuclear disaster and there is a group of people who live on a satellite in space. The leaders on the satellite have to send a hundred of their people to the ground to see if Earth is survivable and then chaos ensues. <laughs> it is one of my favorite sci-fi shows because you get a little bit of everything in that show. It's wild how much it covers. I saw someone like comment, maybe it was on a Reddit thread or some blog or something or a tweet that said the hundred is so manic but it works. During quarantine, I've also been watching a lot of political satire shows. The obvious ones are The Daily Show with Trevor Noah and The Patriot Act with Hassan Minaj. Last week tonight with John Oliver, and I talked about this in another video, so I'm sorry if it's a little bit repetitive, but um, I've been watching these and uh, they give me a little bit of comfort. It's like a lighter version of consuming the news, where you know you can have these really heavy news topics that's going on in the world right now, but you have this lighthearted humor also attached with that. I don't know, satire helps me to realize the darkness and the lightness in certain topics, if that makes sense. So I've been watching these for comfort because it makes me realize like I'm not alone and they give me hope that something good will come out of everything that's going on in the world right now. It's just been my way of consuming news and learning about different topics, especially with the Patriot Act because each show covers a different topic. So that's been really helpful just to you know, build my knowledge about what's going on. So I highly recommend those if you're looking for a way to be informed about what's going on. It's kind of like an easy way to ease yourself in. I had like a period where I was just binging Trevor Noah stand-ups. He actually had a documentary on Hulu called um, You Laugh But It's True. It was really interesting to see how he grew up in apartheid in South Africa. Seeing how race issues were handled in South Africa was really enlightening and interesting and to compare it to what's going on in the States is, um, yeah, it was it was definitely really interesting, but his stand-up is, I find, to be really good. I also have a lot of music favorites, a lot of songs that I've added onto my playlist. I won't go into each song here. I'll just link my playlist down below if you are looking for new songs to listen to. Anyway, that's it for my current favorites. If you made it this far into the video, thank you so much for sticking through it. It is still a little bit awkward to be talking about my favorite things because you know, capitalism, consumerism, I don't want to unnecessarily encourage it, especially since I know we're all going through tough times, but um, I don't know, all these little things make me happy as well. So I hope that this video brightened your day in some way. I'll see you in my next video. Bye.